All right, Final Fantasy VI. Um, last time was a very special episode of our Final Fantasy VI stream <laughs> because we went through um, Jador and the Opera, um, which, as you all know, is very near and dear to my heart. I have great love for it. Um, but, sorry, I'm like turning my volumes down. How is the audio balance? Are we good? Uh, I know I always ask that. Yeah, the Magitech Factory has incredible music. It's called Devil's Lab. Um, yes, I'm sorry, Tofi. Yes, we did the opera last, last time, which was very exciting. And then I did a sneak preview of my band's version of the opera. Um, specifically the aria. So we are currently trying to sneak into the Magitech Research Facility so that we can rescue Terra. Not for the Magitech Research Facility, just we have, in order to get Terra back, we have to go through the Magitech Research Facility um, and then connect with slash rescue the espers there. I love this. This is like the sort of thing that I don't know that you could, I don't know. There's a particular kind of absurd what the heck humor that happens in games from this era. This is the guy who like pretends like he's gonna throw up on them or something like that. Or maybe he just, yeah, he does this weird little dancing freak out thing. Like the, the series of sprite animations are great. remember what I'm supposed to do here. Alright. What do I do here again? I'm trying to remember. He said he was going to distract them. What, what am I supposed to do? I don't honestly remember. For all that I know the game really well, in some ways, yes, Tofi, it should be up. Um, on both YouTube and um, and Twitch. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> it's such interesting. Like the way this is written is so weird. Gonna toss it all. Oh, they're just like, what the heck, buddy? Why are you doing this? Jumping on the dolphin? Dolphin? <laughs> yes, Woolsey's script is pretty incredible. I feel like I should put somebody else in front. He's my favorite. What can I say? Okay. Are you guys ready? Are you ready for the Devil's Lob? Such a great name. For a great song. So this is a tricky one to cover. Um, there's only one group I know of that's done that, and that was those who fight. Um, but I'd love to see somebody do this live. Hi, Forest of Seasons. No, I love, I love the script. I love the translation. I feel like I talk about this every single stream, but it's true. I, the word that I use to describe Ted Woolsey's script is idiosyncratic, which I think is pretty accurate. Oh. Looks like we're having some sort of a problem with um, visibility of all of our emulated... What's the thing I'm looking for? It has been a while. How are you doing? <laughs> um, so on my birthday, which was last month, I, um, man, I'm having trouble with these guys. Um, does that work? That did work. Okay, excellent. Um, I started streaming during the day. I started streaming this game. It's my favorite game and people have been asking for it 
for ages. Um, and then we're just, we're just, we're kind of, we're rolling with it. We're doing it. We're doing this. We are, we are playing Final Fantasy VI. And despite my tendency to talk for forever and ever and ever, um, we might actually beat it. God. Dungeon map. This, uh. Oh, I'm in the wrong tile. No, how do I, I thought. No, I thought I could get. Can I not get on this one? God, there we do, okay. Uh. Okay, Woolsey uncensored. Do you mean um, before when they told him that the script was too long? Alright. We should probably actually use magic. M -m 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 magic. No, don't you tech laser me! Aw, oh, you tech lasered me. Well, I'm gonna drill you. Which fortunately is very effective because it goes right through their ridiculous amounts of armor. Which is what you're supposed to do here. I bought. I guess I must have. All right. No. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm having a bit of a hard time parsing. So this is the same tile set that they used for um for um, Kefka's tower, right? Get on this thing. I want to. I want to do it. doing wrong oh is this one way why am I being so defeated what am I doing wrong I gotta get back there what am I doing Something, apparently, presumably. Okay. Now I have to try to remember what is interactable and what is not interactable here, which, as you can see, is something I'm having trouble with. One of yes, regen. I do love having a regen. I don't even know if it's useful in this game. Oh wait, no, it's over here. This is what I want, right? Yes. Got it. That's okay. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. The drill is very handy. Oh, this isn't the chainsaw that I want. Should I be using the chainsaw instead? 
I thought that the appeal of the drill was that it goes through armor, but I don't remember if the chainsaw does or not. Let's find out. Egg beater! Oh, I guess I should be using this chainsaw. Alright. Haha! Wait, but I just... No! Oh no! Now I can't see whatever will I do! Gosh! Darn! I don't know! It's a mystery! I should probably check. I'm sorry, I'm like, getting distracted by the music. Okay, so you've learned everything, Siren. You have not yet learned float. Sure. Hey, Amphi, how's lunch going? Started and I'm lost. I'm so confused. Ha! Oh, I guessed wrong. I guessed wrong. Okay. Well, that's all right. This is gonna be a pain. I bet I'm gonna miss things that are really important too. But at least I'm remembering how the game works. I'm pretty sure my sister and I had trouble with this section because we couldn't figure out what we were supposed to be doing as kids. How are you not dead? How are you not dead? Well, it's okay. He's gonna be dead now. Bye bye. Bye 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 bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye to you too. I'm just stealing all of their healing items, so that's cool. Bam 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 bam. Such good music. God, I love the soundtrack to this game so much. I want that treasure chest. I don't know how to get to it. We're gonna go around in circles a lot and I'm gonna get frustrated. But at least Blitz makes it that um, it's slightly less frustrating. The pip squeaks. Pip squeaks don't seem to have much health. <sighs> yes, give me all the potions. I guess I should just like down potions instead of using my magic. Like, why not? I'm just getting potions here. Who's looking forward to me getting frustratingly lost in this game, in this section? Pretty sure if I go up and talk to that, it'll... Oh, somebody can equip that. I probably will regret that. Well, we'll see. So these are just stacks of chain. 
And then there's like Magitech armor coming out of that thing because it's the Magitech research facility, see? So it's where all of the Magiteching is happening. The... This is gonna wipe them out if I, if I input it right, which watch me not have to input it right. Which could happen. See? Look at that. Look at that. Okay, so it's actually worth my while to have um, the, the elemental weapons in this dungeon because it goes through their ridiculous levels of armor. It is interesting, they're like these like little toy dolls wearing like metal slime hats really is what it looks like. And those guys gave me a lot of magic points. Not to be confused with MPs. There's a difference. Yeah. Anyway. So if I did that right, we'll find out shortly. Oh look, it got lightninged! What? That's amazing. I'm excited that that happens. Go Sab and go. I love that like when he like ducks, like the sunglasses aren't on his face anymore. And then he like stands right back into them. Like the sunglasses aren't actually a character thing. They're just a thing that goes on the sprite. Such an interesting. I mean, it makes sense if that's the way that they could do things. <sighs> Look at all those Magitech armors. Just imagine all of those Magitech armors being unloaded on, um, Poor innocent people. It's not good. Nobody wants it. Yeah, set them on fire. Didn't work. Well, that's all right. We're gonna set them on fire with fire sabins. See, like, I love that it's it's fire sabins flying around. Which I guess is supposed to symbolize that he's on fire and dancing. Do you guys mind if we just don't worry about the treasure chests here? Like, is there a reason why I need to worry about missing treasure chests here? Because I have no qualms about just, like, working my way through here relatively quickly. Hey, hot brushings! Good to see you! I'm gonna use some of those tonics that I keep stealing. Not a thief. Not a thief. Oh, interesting! Actually, now that I think about it, copies of a lot of the elemental weapons, I mean, they're weapons that are infused with magicite, or I guess the power of the espers, if not magicite per se, you know? Do I want to jump down there? I'm going to regret it if I do, maybe... This is going to loop around, isn't it? No, I think that is, yeah, no, the, the whole, uh, all of the audio stuff is really um, very satisfying in this game. <laughs> yes, some triangles. It's a, uh, it's a very distinctive audio, audio so soundscape. I don't know what the word would be for what I'm looking for here. Anyway. Anyway, Edgar learned fire. I mean, yes, that is that is the way of it with this. Um, okay, how are you doing, friend? You've learned everything. Okay, we're gonna take Siren off. As sad as that would probably make you. Ba -ba 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 
Who hasn't had Siren? Who hasn't had Siren? Everyone has had Siren. Okay, well, in that case... He really needs... He's got Kieran right now. Fuck. Uh, you could probably use that. I want everybody to have Cure 1, you know? learn bolt too why not yeah no the uh the the sunglasses like i feel like i should just like i should have a pair of oh, how do i get there oh how do i get there i want that ah i see shortcuts bum, 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 bum. i feel like i should have a pair of sunglasses to put on when my characters are blinded so that there is some negative um, experience to make life harder because it's supposed to be a status effect. It doesn't do anything in game. So perhaps it should do something on a meta level. Yeah. Ah! Gold helmet. That sounds useful. Uh, so at least you're in the front row. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's it's a favorite. Oh no, there's two of you, you jerks. I don't like you. Go away. No! I did bad. I did bad, friends. Oh no, don't do it. That's probably bad. I probably don't want program 30. Actually, program 35 didn't look too bad. All right, Sabin and Lauren, we can do this. Oh no, I bet I did it wrong. I'm just gonna be like, no, Lauren. I'm gonna be like, oh. Oh, I got it right. Amazing. Bio Blaster. Should I be using Bio Blaster against them? Sabin, you're slow. You're slow, friend. Look at you and your uh, fire dance of sloth. Sloth dance. Fire saunter. What? No! Oh, I thought this is how I got down there. Apparently it's not. How do I get down there? I want to... I'm gonna get lost. I'm gonna get more lost, aren't I? Which is gonna be like all lost all the time. That's what it's gonna be. Hi, your mosey. Oh, I like that. I like the way you think, Toby. Oh no, Lauren, what did you do? You're letting Sabin down. But that's okay. Yeah. Man, the elemental things are good here. Okay, Edgar has learned Bolt. Edgar, what have you not learned so far? You've learned that. You haven't learned Float. You haven't learned Cure 2. Everyone is learning Cure 2. What does Cure 2? Stamina useful? Fine. It's gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. 
Lost. We're gonna be lost. Okay, so stamina's not useless. Alright, slightly lost. As long as I don't have to do the entire dungeon over again because I got so lost. That would not be ideal. I don't want that. But hey, we're leveling up a lot. I would love to do a cover of this one, but I don't even... I don't think I could. I think I'd have to get my friend who does flute... <coughs> flute beatboxing to be able to do a flute cover of this, you know? Hmm... Let's blitz! I don't know what that's a reference to. Is that a reference? What is it? What am I talking about when I say let's blitz? What is that? What's that from? Also, I need to heal my entire party. Holy crap. I'm not going to, though. This is probably going to take him out. Yep. Yay! Seven! Thank you, Forest of Seasons! That is the correct answer. Yes, thank you. Because why not? Sorry, I can't not sing along with it. It's really good. Ha ha! I figured it out. Kevka's having a really good time. Like, I like to think that he's singing this to himself. I'm collecting espers, I'm extracting magic, and... I'll restore the statues. You're like, what the heck are you even talking about, Kefka? But this is establishing something that we've never heard of before. Also, like, notice, like, how he's just, like, unnecessarily a jerk. Take a hike. Thanks, Ted <laughs> I do wonder what went into some of the decisions that he made. Like, why did you, why did you translate? I mean, granted, um, at the time that they were making these games, like, they had no idea that they were making something that would be so formative for so many of us for the rest of our lives. Growing up, getting words that he wrote tattooed on our bodies or, like, singing music that he translated like you know back in the day um like I mean, even if you look at like the credits for nes games you'll see um people didn't take it seriously so they'd use like goofy cutesy nicknames because it's like well here's this this like kind of goofy dumb little thing that i'm working on that like i like i enjoy my friends like it but it's not gonna amount to anything you know, which is just our kind of like sort of trashy hobby. Um, and now it's this, you know, gigantic industry. Um, but more than that, emotionally, games are so important to people and they've been so instrumental in like how a generation of people have grown up for better and for worse. Like, I do think that there are some downsides to people growing up being told you're the hero and everything you do is amazing I don't know I wouldn't be surprised blue glass like would you be surprised if that happened oh, Final Fantasy 10 is good I like that game um but um I think when you think it, it's kind of like how um Sometimes with the music, like, there, there are songs in games that rip off songs outside of games, which is sometimes where licensing issues come out with re-releases and things like that. Um, but at the time, they were like, you know, 
who's going to play this? Who's going to notice that I ripped off the Beatles in this song or whatever? Like, nobody's going to... It's not going to matter. I'm just working on this weird project for work that me and my fellow nerds like. So it's, I think it's very interesting to see, like, would Ted Woolsey have done things differently if he'd known how iconic his writing was going to be, if he'd known how many people were going to play this game and how important it was going to be to them? I don't know, maybe he would. Maybe this is just, like, the truest... the truest... Ted Woolsey. And that this is the, the, the realist to his his vision of translating, although it's not clearly because it ran out of space. This is like his... I mean, I kind of wonder maybe part of it was because they kept telling him, no, this is too long, no, this is too long. He's like, fine! All right, you want to see what I write that's short? Well, it'll be short enough. You know, like there's... I can kind of see a little bit of that. Can't you? We're gonna go save. Yeah, I don't want to fight the espers without having saved. Edgar, you're the one who's just gonna heal the party. There we go. The party is healed. Alright, the game is saved. Everything's good. A lot of my party members have cure. Let us. Oh no! Is this Ifrit? Yes. Hi friends! Oh no! This is not good. Also, I'm pretty sure somebody in my party has. Oh. Um. Maybe we'll do this instead. Maybe we should runic. Oh yeah, maybe Sully should runic. Sully's you're gonna ruin. R runic, not ruin. I mean, she will ruin things if she doesn't. so far. He did give, there, ha, there have been interviews with Ted Woolsey. I just don't know how. Whew! Nice. Yeah! Yeah! It goes Sully's. I guess I should. Do I have? I don't have fire. Who are you? Um. Let's be friends. Like, I think in another. Okay, look. It's probably not gonna work. Maybe my weapons will work. Oh, wait. It totally worked. Oh, no! Am I misremembering these guys? I thought these were like the jellies that you can only hit with magic. I don't know. Maybe I should have been using Bio Blaster on those guys all that time. Okay, so they're clearly they're not alive, so they don't get Bio Blaster. Do they get Auto Crossbow? 
Huh. Well, that's cool. Like, I, f I feel like in a more recent game, you'd have like an actual proper scene with these two. We haven't long to live. Because grabbed our friends. Suffered my turn in one of the glass tubes. They're like, our friends are dead. We're dying. Clearly. Um. There's gotta be some reason why you have Magicite instead of Magitech. So, in our desperation, we will. I mean, it is kind of. I mean, they do they they do the best they can with like a very limited amount of text there, you know. Like they don't have a lot of space to develop the characters or the. the conflict of it, but I, I, I seem to recall that it, it made an impression on me as a kid, you know? Alright, so you've currently got Siren. You've learned everything there. Fire 2. Ice. Oh, hey, look. Some other way to learn cure. La 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 I can't not sing along with it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you've got Kieran for a reason. Man, my throat is really itchy. I hope I'm not getting sick. That would be really unfortunate, and I would be sad about it. I mean, I guess... Oh man, how many of you guys are playing through Final Fantasy X right now? Also, I love that literally everyone who pops into my channel while we're in the Match Tech Research Facility has to comment on music. You're, you're required. You're required to comment on how good this song is. But can we all agree, in a soundtrack that I think is one of the best, obviously I'm biased, but I think generally considered to be one of the best video game soundtracks of all time, can we not all agree that Devil's Lab, the Magitech Research Facility song, is one of the best songs on a very strong soundtrack. Like, it's different from anything else on the soundtrack. I don't think there's a single other song that sounds like it. Um, but it's so good! Like, I don't even know what you'd classify it as, but it's so good. And yeah, I think you're right, mixing some metaphor soup, that the, that the value there is less about who they are and more about like putting a human face, so to speak, on um on not just I mean we've we've seen we've seen what happens when Kefka goes after villages and such. Okay, so Bioblast is probably what I should have been using all along. Oh well I don't know. Um Oh, my help if I actually went up the staircase. Um but we're at the point where you are beginning to see that, um, what's what you've got? Hey Kate, what's up? I'm streaming at a time that's convenient for people in your part of the world, relatively speaking. But that mean, I mean, it's not like it's two in the morning. Um, But we've seen the horrors of, of war and civilians, um, but we're just beginning to understand the horrors of, like, the, 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 the cost of our uh, military weaponry stuff. Haha! <laughs> it's okay, Kate! No worries. You get to hear some of the best music in the game, so it's all good. Let's blitz! Um, 
What was I gonna say? I don't know. I find this game endlessly compelling and interesting. And it's not uncommon or unheard of to have a story that highlights the like evils of war. That's part of what I love so much about um, about the Suikoden games. Okay, I guess we were not technically in the Magitech research facility before this. Is this... Are we not? Is, is it only the glass tubes room that is the Magitech research facility and the rest of it is just the, uh, the, uh, the factory? It's really horrifying. All right, I'm gonna take a moment here to say I feel like there was a cultural phenomenon in the US in the late 80s, early 90s, um, that, and I know there's kind of a delay sort of as like pop culture, and these days not so much, but for a while though, there was like a delay like pop culture of like, you know, a few years where like what was trendy in the US at this point would be trendy in a place that like kind of imported trendiness from the US like a few years later. So let's think about E.T. and the movie Splash. Who here has seen the movie Splash? A hidden passage in the bottom left wall of this tube section? What? Um. Gobbler, oh no. I'm gonna set you on fire. Watch me set you on fire. got enough sleep last night but apparently I'm yawning but there's like a whole thing there's a whole thing in that era of um, and I think okay so I haven't seen stranger things but I feel like from what I've heard um, ah. I feel like it also actually not only like the aesthetics and music and stuff like that um, are throwbacks, but also there's this like the I'm, I'm, I'm out of mat mat out uh, 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 out of magic. What happened? Did I get all my magic osmos or am I muted? Hold on, maybe I should pay more attention. I was. Can like, you, you call yourself a bit of a mermaid kid? I was 100% a mermaid kid. Like, I didn't know that that was a term, but that, yes, that that's me. There's a secret passageway? I had no idea that was here. Maybe I should have given it to Sully's. There we go. Okay. I don't know actually if that's the right decision here or not, but it's the decision that I made. Um, what was I? What was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I feel like I mean this game came out in what? 1992? 1993? I think somewhere in there. Um, the like idea of the government is going to find you, the supernatural being, and take you into custody and put you in, ex like, do experiments, like, put you in a tube and do experiments on you. And then your friends have to break you out. 94 in the US. Ah, okay. Suikoden came out in 95, I thought. Maybe it came out in 96. Or maybe my concept of time was different then. Oh, excellent, Tofi. I'm glad to know that the music is taking over your typing. Haha! <laughs> no, but like, so looking back on that, when I was a kid, I had so many, and, and by kid, I also include like being a teenager in high school and stuff. I had so many dreams. Um, because my dreams have always been very vivid, like, storytelling dream experiences. Um, uh, 
but of like having supernatural powers in some way and then the government tries to capture you and experiment and you know you have to like then you have to like fly away or run away or whatever you know you know it's it's, it's a trope it's a story thing and i feel like it was super common in that time period and i feel like this game and this whole thing right here is pulling from that same because in in splash it turns out she's secretly a mermaid and so the government captures her at some point to do experiments on her i don't remember the details but in et the government wants to capture him because he's an alien and they want to do experiments on him daryl yes the child is a robot and the government wants to capture him yes mixing metaphor soup you and me both Ending up as part of an underground teen resistance is my jam. So many stories that I wrote for like a long time had elements of that. My dreams were like that. Oh, well, lots of plot happened. Just I feel like everything that I write, practically a lot of it comes from really vivid dream sections that I then have to turn into an actual functional story. Because you do actually have to make adaptations. If you dream a story, but you can't just write it as it was in the dream and then be like, it's done. It doesn't work like that. Um, but yeah. Oh man, okay, mixing metaphor soup. I feel like if I were to dig up some of my stories from high school and send them to you, you would be like, ah yes, we had similar imaginations. <laughs> And part of it, I think, is the uh, influence of this kind of thing. Um, but also, like, I, just, I don't know. I wonder whether Final Fantasy VI was inspired by those the popularity of those tropes in the period of time shortly before it, I mean, shortly, the period of time before it came out. Oh no, what just happened? Oh my god! Wow, look at all these experimental magic swords! And now I've poisoned everyone. Well, okay, it's one thing to have surrealism. Like, one of my, my favorite book ever written is a book called Seaward by Susan Cooper, and it, it feels like dream imagery. And she, like me, as it turns out, and I didn't know this until I talked to her about it um, at a reading a few years ago. Um, but she writes based on dreams that she has too. Um, Seaward is a surreal story that is dreams patched together. If you take a thing that doesn't lend itself towards like surrealism and you just write it as it is, it will be, it may be awkward, it might be trite, it might be nonsensical. Oh no, you ready to go fight Frankenstein's monster? What do I do here? Um, I think I'm probably about as good as I'm gonna get. Let's do it. He's mechanical Frankenstein's monster. He's so cool looking though. Uh, drill. That seems useful. He's probably gonna cast on us, isn't he? I don't remember him at all. But I'm just gonna do big damages to him in the best ways that I can. Which is actually seldom to actually cast spells. Like, it's just to churn out as much damage as you possibly can in non spell ways. I mean, maybe I should cast on him, but I don't trust him not to have, like, wall or something up. Because he doesn't have anything, if he doesn't have anything, then I should probably just attack him. Oh, yeah, that's what I figured. What if I just hit you with swords? Or drills? Or fire dance? Or aura bolts? Huh? What if I did that? What if that's what happened? Oh no! He's strong to fire! Oh no, I'm gonna have to try to aura bolt! Okay, so this is a thing I didn't understand as a child, but I learned this when I went back. 
through part of this game last year, or the year before, a couple of years ago. You could spend a lot of time trying to be really smart and strategic. You could be like, yeah, I'm gonna pay attention to what he's weak to and I'm gonna cast that with the spells I just got from that magicite. Or, hear me out, you just hit him really hard. A lot. With things that are not elemental. Oh, oh, that reminds me. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This scene, it's, it's the bridge scene, which is which is later it's after you get Sonus back. So never mind. <sighs> I'm gonna get my sketchbooks from childhood so you can see them. <sighs> Does that mean that I should de-equip her? Okay, um, so is that, that's not Leviathan, that's, um, Bismarck. That looks like Madwin. I don't remember if the unicorn's just unicorn. Is that Carbuncle? No, that's Carbuncle up in the upper right. There's like shade in the upper left. Where's that lower right? know who you are, friend. Hmm. So that was Madwin, okay. Sid in his ridiculous raincoat. He's actually one of the sprites that's closest to Amana's original illustration. <laughs> So Magisite has to be freely given, and so in trying to drain their power, they never fully managed. Yeah, I like that blue glass. I've, I've done the same. Dubious characters be your troops. So he's a professor. Hmm. <laughs> Kafka is just having a great time. You miserable blockhead! so much there's so much drama and like like Locke how could you doubt her what shit what has she done to indicate that you shouldn't trust her like yes she's from the Empire but you've seen her you've seen that she's motivated by trying to do the right thing she wants to undo what she can of the wrong she's already done and she wants to prevent horrible things from happening in the future what has she done to give you any impression that she's gonna betray you
Yeah, have a little faith. That's a good phrase. Yeah. Just for this moment. I mean, I don't know if it's, I don't know that I would say devotion. I mean, she was raised in and by and for the Empire. Um, and I don't know, it would be an awfully long con. Um, if that were, if that were true. I just, I love this moment. Also, anyone who says that Locke and Celis' relationship is not their dominant, like, story, like, emotional connection here, like... Who's she talking to? Um, because frankly, the other, the rest of the returners don't fully trust Sully's. They don't. And they kind of don't, they don't necessarily have reason to. Um, because Cyan obviously is coming at things with a very understandable emotional bias. Um, and all they have is Locke's word that Sully's was awaiting execution. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of what I think Forest of Seasons. Like, I think she kind of went without thinking along with what she was raised into. And it was only like the fact that she managed to have such a strong moral code, such a strong inherent sense of right and wrong, because clearly, um, you know, Gestahl doesn't have that. Kafka doesn't have that. Who in the Empire does? Leo? Yes. But other than that, um, there's a lot of normal people who've been conscripted into it. But when it comes to like the, the higher ups who are making decisions, there's, I don't know. I assume Sully's did some reading probably and, 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 and followed stories and thought about heroism. Um, but she went along with it for a while until at some point she independently was like, you know, this isn't okay. I'm not okay with any of this happening. Um, I feel horrible for what we did to Miranda and I am not okay with Kefka's plans for Doma. We need to stop this. Um, Gestalt seems pretty cartoonishly evil to me, honestly. Um, as much as I find Kefka a really interesting addition to the story and I love Kefka as a character, I find him interesting because he wins, which is unusual. Um, and I find him interesting because he's such a unique feeling character. Like he's, and this is largely to do with Ted Woolsey's, uh, translation, but he's, he's so wacky and weird and interesting that he's, that he manages despite being just plain evil. Um, he manages to be interesting. Um, Gestalt's pretty boring, honestly. He's... Um, a megalomaniac who wants to take over the world because he likes power. That's honestly pretty boring. That's pretty straight evil. Like, he, he pretends to have more to him so he can trick you. But there really isn't more to him than that. He's, he's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, um, and simplistic, which is fine. Again, Final Fantasy VI is a game that, um... Well, that's because if the world gets ended, like, Gestalt doesn't want to destroy the world. He wants to rule the world. And if the world gets destroyed, he can't rule it. That's why. he's not. It's not this that he's, like, moved to protect the world because he has compassion. It's that, um, it's that Kafka doesn't have an end goal, um, for, um, like, he, Kefka doesn't want power because he wants to sit with it and be like, yes, I'm amazing and in charge of things. That's what Gestahl wants. Like, Gestahl isn't, like, he doesn't murder, like, he doesn't, he doesn't wipe out every single city they go to. Um, he sacks the cities, but he, he wants to still be in charge of them. He wants to bring the entire world under his thumb. He enjoys the feeling of power. He likes that. Um, 
the fact that he sees a, a like a dying woman and her infant and is like, oh, I could use this. I don't think there's any ambiguity in uh, Gestalt's evil nature. Like, there's not any shades of gray. There's not any secret compassion. There's not any softer side. Gestalt views everything as something that he can have and that he wants. And so he's going to get it because he wants it. And he should have all the things because he can. Um, Kafka wants to destroy the world because he's angry. He's hurting. And he's crazy. He's just completely unhinged. It's bad. Um, I don't think I'd want either one of them, you know, uh, at my party. Um, but at least with Gestalt, you kind of know what you're getting. And you know there's some limits. Gestalt's not just going to annihilate the human race because he can. Gestalt wants there to still be human race so he can take over <laughs> and be in charge of them. Which, apparently, some people really enjoy power. It's one of those things that, like, I'm like, but then what? Like, I understand wanting to have some degree of, like, you know, yes, I feel cool, and I can get the things that I want, but to, to keep trying to take over the entire world, I don't understand. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, Beatrix and Steiner are very interesting. Well, maybe we'll play Final Fantasy IX if we have time for another daytime stream after this. Maybe we'll do the Lauren replays her favorite games, in which case we'll play through Suicune at some point. Uh, um. <clears throat> but yeah, so I find this stuff interesting. And there's not a ton of, like, depth. In this game, it's very larger than life, um, which makes sense as a... <laughs> and yeah, fortunately, I don't think the party would let Kafka join them. I'm more thinking, like, if I threw a party at my house, I wouldn't want either one of those guys to, to be over at my house. Not No guest dolls allowed, especially no Kafka's allowed. No, not good. Um... <laughs> um Ah, anyway, bringing it back around to my favorite characters of all time. Locke and Sellies. I love them. I love them. I love them so much. They make me so happy. They're so dramatic and romantic and compelling and engaging. And they don't really banter, even though I love banter. And Locke's not really a, a rogue with a heart of gold. He's just a heart of gold whose career path is rogue. Um, he's not like a, he's not like a lovable scamp who, who flirts and banters away. That's not his type, but I love him anyway. And Sully's is so serious and dramatic and it's so great. But yeah, like at this point, um, Sully's and Tara have kind of had some interaction, which if I were in charge of writing the story, Sully's and Tara would have had stronger internet interactions at this point. Words are hard. Um, but, um, the others, like, she's fought alongside them. She's fought to defend them. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a good way of putting it, Forest of Seasons. Um, he's a, he's, he's an agent of the rebellion is what he is. That's, that's his full-time job. <laughs> um, but, but. Locke is the one who knows her. Locke is the one who trusts her. Locke is the one who tells everybody to trust her. Because she doesn't really defend herself with anyone else's misunderstanding of her or distrust of her. She just wants to stop bad things from happening. Um, but I wonder, kind of, I get the feeling in the Empire, a lot of people treat Sully's well because she, they, they, she, she's, she's important. She's powerful. We like power. She's a great fighter and a, and a, and a, a person who can use magic really effectively. She's a general. Um, but who in the Empire likes Sully's for Sully's? Um, it's kind of implied. Once we get to the solitary island, we're going to take a look at that. But she and Sid have a relationship of sorts. Um, but that's really it. She doesn't have friends or family, really. Um, 
And then when she joins the Returners, she still doesn't quite belong. Except with Locke. And he... Yeah, I, I guess you could say, like, yeah, maybe she maybe she and Leo were friends. I, I could see that, actually. I could, I could definitely see that. I could see... I could see that. So, yeah, maybe Leo. But, but outside of Leo, um, who doesn't seem like this sort of guy who hangs out with his friends casually or anything like that, um, I, 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 I can't really see them becoming, like, close personal friends, opening up and talking about feelings and stuff. And so, in a way, I feel like Locke is the first person who takes a look at Sully's and sees her as a person. And not as an imperial general who fills this role and does these things, whether we like that role in these things or we hate that role in these things. Locke looks at her and he sees here as a person, a human being who's being hurt and I won't stand for it. And she's like, I want to save people. And he's like, that's really good. And I'm going to support that and help you. And that seems like that's really significant. And so that's maybe part of why the, the situation with Rachel and the, the conversation, um, like, am I just a substitute for her, um, is so meaningful in a way, is that for Sully's, who's never had anybody who looks at her and is like, Sully's you, the human being. I like and respect you. I care about you. I want to know what you want and what you feel and what you think and what matters to you. Um, and then the one person who kind of seems like he might, she's like, oh, no, no, he's just seeing his dead girlfriend in me. That's all. Even he doesn't like me for me. Um, and they kind of sort of get through that, um, but it's still like present. And then here, like the first opportunity for him to doubt her, he does. Um, and it kind of makes sense why it is for him that she wants to put herself and everything on the line because he's the only one who's really gotten to know her and really cared about her. And so he's important to her. Cause this is implied to be a, a scary and dangerous thing that she's doing here. Because she doesn't get away right here. And it's true, Locke did doubt her. And she proved herself to be trustworthy to the end. Here. Ha 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 ha! No, that wasn't our fighting. That was the Magisite blasting out of it. Oh wait, is there something else I could do here? Is there something I'm missing? No, I guess not. Okay, right? There's not any sort of, like, secret thing that if you go back and talk to one of the capsules right now, you get an extra thing or something, right? Right? I don't think so. Just the fact that they give you the possibility here made me wonder. Hi, Sid. Ah. is the only problem here. Like, I don't think it's just Kefka using the Empire. I think the Empire is doing evil. But at this point, they want you to have some doubt that the Empire is evil because Gestalt is going to pretend to not be evil soon. Life energy of those espers. Oh, Sid. I'm going to talk to the Emperor. 
and have this stupid war stopped. Baby child, how on earth do you think that's gonna be a possibility? What makes you think you have that kind of sway? Oh gosh, I just realized, I just realized people are dying in this war. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna stop it right now. Like, no, you sillies. Uh, everybody, like, people, people dying and things getting destroyed, um, in the name of the empire taking over things is, what is it? It's a feature, not a bug? Uh, look at all of these. Shoot, that's the one I couldn't recognize. But I got all the rest of them. Couldn't remember what Phantom was called here. It's Shade, I think, and some others. Ifrit. Oh, look at that. Cure 2. Yeah. I do love Cure 2. Let's be real. <laughs> He's probably less likely to die than Locke. <sighs> Although, actually, no, he's more likely to be attacking. Uh, uh, let's go with it. Let's give you life. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. God, there's so many options. It's too many options, I can't handle it. <sighs> See? So this is a thing that they don't go into all the details, but yeah. Sid and Sully's do have a relationship. I just, I don't know that it's very clearly defined. Like, I don't know that she fully thought of him as family. See? Because she was a Magitech experiment, um, she was raised within the, um, like, raised within the Empire and, 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 and kind of groomed for this. Yeah. See, I'm not making it up when I talk about Sully's and, 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 and how she was raised and how remarkable I think it is that she has done what she's done. Anyway, I love Sully's. Mode 7 graphics! Whoa, Mag Rotor! Uh, is there, like, a particular path I'm supposed to go here? I'm trying to remember. What? Really, Blue Glass? That's fascinating. I, I never even thought about that as a thing. How interesting. There's one way you choose which direction you go though, right? There is a minecart ride. Is that to fight one of the dragons? Or something in the world of world of ruin? I might actually shut down early just because my throat is hurting and I'm worried about. Uh. Yeah, no, it's. It, I remember this being really impressive and scary back in the day. 
because I have my whole problem with caves and mines and things like that. Oh, just you wait till we get to the Phoenix Cave. It's funny because the Phoenix Cave is my favorite um, character's story stuff. Wow, my monitor keeps turning off. That's not my favorite thing that's ever happened. Um, okay, well, apparently we're using capture now, so we'll see what happens, Rowan. We'll see if I get it. Um, but when I played through this game for the first time as a grown-up, um, uh, my ex-husband was around watching me play it. He was like, wow, Lauren, you are scared of the Phoenix Cave. Like, you're getting, like, so anxious. I can see it. Um, and I was like, yes, that is correct. Even though it's, like, two-dimensional, I'm not, like, in there. It's, like, Locke's story resolution, like, still, like, <gasps> you know the room where, like, the... The platforms come and go like Heat Man and Mega Man 3, I think that is. Here we go. Oh no! This looks a lot like um Scarmelian, I think it is, from uh No, I did it wrong. Alright, what is the gimmick with this guy? I do not remember. What's he gonna do other than look like in a mono design? Uh oh. This probably isn't good for me. I'm probably gonna be really sad if that happened, aren't I? Oh, Red Feast. That's actually really, like, nice and vivid. Doesn't this guy look a lot like the, um, some of the, the fiends, the elementals in, uh, in, uh, in 4? <clears throat> Like, he's kind of got, like, Scarmelian's build, and, um, what's his name? Rubicante's color scheme. I use their retranslated names, because otherwise it's going to be my lawn. When I was a kid, my sister and I, oh my god! <laughs> Yes, this game. When I was a kid, my sister and I would play like stuffed animals um, where characters from the games that we loved. Um, we would play Final Fantasy IV characters from Final Fantasy II at the time. And so we had my lawn and a sprinkler system for two dragons. Yeah. <laughs> That's the part that I play with my hands. Oh man, you've got a lot of health, buddy. But not that much health. Nope. Alright. Sav and learn cure two. We might as well sit on this until we get remedy. I don't min max very well or I start stressing out. But. Hey, Setzer! What's up, friend? So, by what's up with Sully's, he's like, Where is Sully's? Where's the hot girl? Sorry, Setzer. She's not for you. <laughs> She's not interested. Hey, we've seen this in the intro. Crud! What a mess! That's not what he's actually saying there. 
He's saying things that would get him bleeped out on this family-friendly channel. I love that the, like, Imperial Capital just has these, like, Magitech arms that come out of the top. We're out of here on the double! Oh no! It's getting dark. Uh oh! Are you ready? Are you ready? Just these horrible floating arms. Okay, so we don't use lightning on these guys because... Oh, Setzer! Okay, so you're gonna be our cure friend. Also, we're having some problems with the emulator, as you can see. Which is somewhat disconcerting. Okay. Heat source level one, that's not good. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm gonna have to try to aura bolt. Did I do that intentionally? I don't even remember doing that, but I guess I must have done it. Uh-oh. I don't know what that does. Let's find out. Yeah, you steal that potion. Sorry, I'm sorry guys. I'm just like shamelessly singing along with everything. I just love it. Is this Madwin? Yep, I forgot. Bot isn't thanking people for following, but thank you for following. I got a notification there. Man, I love this song. We don't want to be used as weapons and we don't want to fight with our enemies. We just want to be left to live alone. He's so cool looking. Like, do we know exactly what his design is? You okay, Madwin? He's so cool looking. That's right, blue glass. You know how it is, although I actually don't know how many 
places there are to access here. metaphor soup. It kind of makes me think of the designs from Paladin's Quest, um, Lennis. I don't know why it's called Paladin's Quest in the translation. Listen well and think clearly. <clears throat> I still have a really strong reaction to seeing the sylphs. I love them and I don't know why. I think my sister, I mean, obviously I love fairies, like very clearly I love fairies, but I think, I think that my sister and I must have played a game as kids where the sylphs were significant because I have like this like extra level of excitement when I see the sylphs. So we must have played something and the sylphs were a significant section. <laughs> Light. That's a good way of putting it. The elder has wings, I think, or a hunchback. <sighs> no, they're not. They can make a child. It's kind of a shame that she doesn't get a custom sprite. I think it's a recolor. Like I don't think there are anyone there's anyone else with quite the same coloring as her. But <laughs> it's like, sure, I'll give the pendant that protects the Esper world to this human girl who's just wandered in. Like, so this makes me think of, like, finding out that Ted Wilsey translated Secret of Mana explains so much. Because there's, when you rescue the girl, or whether when the girl rescues you from the goblin, she says, she says this line, like, I guess it must be a, like, it must be a case of mistaken identity, I guess I lose. Which I never understood what that meant. When I was a kid, I thought there was, like, some other story thing that would have made that make sense. But... Stolen Light, do you have, can you, can you supply us with like a summary of like what's supposed to be happening here? What this is supposed to be like? <clears throat> oh my goodness, it's supposed to be snowing so much today. I haven't heard from the guy who's supposed to drop off my wallet, but I hope he gets back to me and drops it off. He said this is going to be this afternoon sometime so I can get groceries so I can have food. <laughs> Uh, I'll make a quiche. I'll make a quiche. You yeah, well, she does say she was looking for dialect and she thought you were him. Um, but, like, the way that it's phrased for me as a kid was not intuitive to understand what she was talking about there. Um, but so when she says, boy, did I take the low road or what? I don't know. <laughs> so folk are pretty upset, you being a human and all. Like, they seem to have this really, really informal way of speaking. I'm tired living in the human world. It brings out the worst in people. Desire, greed, and loathing. I mean... That's basically... Some of the deadly sins, right? Is hatred one of the seven deadly sins? I don't know. Oh... <coughs> ah, thank you, Stolen Light. That's kind of important. That's 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 a very important distinction, actually. Like her being like, I don't fit in there. All these bad things happen. Then then why does she say so? I'm an example of the evil in this world, huh? I don't know. All right. I don't get enough sleep these days. 
And if I'm having an allergy problem, which I think I am, then I might not be breathing as deeply as I would like. Oh, it's getting cold. Okay, I want to see what temperature it is. What's the temperature outside? Hmm. It's still slightly above freezing. Well. <clears throat> Should I look up and see what the actual Game Boy Advance script here is? Let's take a look. Let's look up GBA script. No. GBA script FF6. <clears throat> Let's find out. No, I no, like Game Facts has the translation. Game facts have the complete translation, right? In depth facts, low level thing, foreign language facts, right? Sorry, friends. I just want to be able to. This is guides. I know that you can find the script. Go, oh, game script, it is there. Okay. Thanks, game facts. Is game facts still relevant? Do people. This is from this is from 2007. All right, hold on. <clears throat> Oops, we went too far. That's the masa. Okay, so the 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 so it's um ah oh wow this is completely different. Okay, so Madwin says, did I wake you? And she says, you're an esper? What's this pendant around your neck? And he says, I'll give it to you. A charm from the esper world. So he doesn't say, like, this is, like, the thing that keeps the esper world safe. A charm from the esper world. So she says, the esper world. So that is where I ended up. And he says, everyone is at, is at a loss as to how you, a human, could have made it into our world. And she says... You're the one who saved me, right? And then she says, my name is Madeline. I was sick of living in the human world. It's nothing but a vortex of greed and hate. So I wandered into the storm, and before I knew it, I was here. So it's kind of like a, kind of, it's a little like Undertale, actually. Some bad thing happened, and you tried to escape and found yourself in another world of beasts. What's the name of this song? Oh. Yeah. Um, so he says they say that humans and espers can't coexist and she says so you don't want me here right and he says no I'm just not sure and then this is the same and he says alright someone can show you the way back <laughs> yes so Madeline became Madonna Madwin is the same though but that may have been translated the same way because um, it's iconic enough. So interesting, huh? All right, well, I am Madwin and I cannot access the menu, no. They didn't decide to draw a portrait for him or anything. The human's gone. Oh no. I mean, to be fair, it is pretty disastrous. What is this? Why can't I do anything here? I want to steal the Esper's stuff, okay? I don't get to, though. Not allowed. Unallowed. Forbidden. Like the piranhas in Twilight Princess. Hey, Blues! Oh! That makes sense, Stolen Light. And seems, in seems fairly consistent. Never gotten this far, Blues. The 
the tiling on the floors is kind of weird here. I don't know if they mean the link between the worlds. I think maybe they mean the barrier between the worlds has weakened. That's what would make more sense here. You know? I should play flute. I should practice flute more than I have been. Oh, I've been here, have I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be the link. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be. Ah, okay. Why are all the houses filled with the wolves and sylph? Like, wolf and sylph combo. Is that how couples generally are in... This world? Ah. Who have I not talked to yet? Where have I not gone yet? This is my home, right? No. about that. Yeah, okay, so those are the generic things. Yeah, like, I don't think it ever really registered that the default shapes for espers are cute little fairies for girls and big scary wolves for boys, I guess is the implication there. Hello. He looks like he's Mad one have horns? I think he does. Yeah, I think he's got horns and pointy ears. And might be furry, but I think he's sh I think he's shirtless. This guy looks like Umaro. So he looks like he might be some sort of a beast man. This is symbolic, the section. It's, a, it's stylized, what's happening here. <laughs> she doesn't seem to have green hair here. is my favorite Final Fantasy game. If I'm playing 9, I might tell you that I like 9 better, but um, otherwise, no, this is my favorite. He looks like a dog. He looks like a doggy. Like, his 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 beard, it looks like the, the spot here under his beard mustache, I guess under his mustache, looks like that's like his like doggy nose. And then the like, I guess his white hair, or maybe it's part of his hat hanging down here, they look like ears. This is very similar to um, the song that plays in towns that have been occupied. Sweep all the nasty creatures out of our realm. <laughs> I 
I think it implies that Tara was two years old. That two years after she's born. So it's been a, a couple of years. I doubt she dyes her hair given that, like, she went through a period of her life without having... Be wearing our hide. Well, but it doesn't necessarily say that it's two years later from the two of them meeting. Like it could be two years later from the baby being born. That's kind of what I what I interpreted there is that Tara is two years old. That that um, Madonna comes through and she and Madwin fall in love and then they make a baby. And then about two years from the time that the baby is born. I wouldn't be surprised if it was inspired hot brushings. I'm afraid I don't know that offhand. <sighs> oh, does it still in light? Okay, I mean, I guess that's true. Look, timelines are fuzzy. Did you all say the same thing? Yes, they all say the same thing that they've been saying. All right. I guess the game doesn't expect you to go around and talk to everybody obsessively like I do. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Thank you, Stolen Light. An army has come. All right, let's do this. It's gonna be sad for everybody. D go! I remember being really confused by the um, by the sounds that the sound effects of people making noises like that. There was a dragon behind the table. What table? What dragon? This is my room. Oh, man. Oh my gosh, I am really tired. Oh, there is a dragon! Hi! Do you even know what you've done? No. It's bad, though. It is interesting to me that the um, the espers aren't shown to be perfect creatures. Like, I mean, they've got reasons to fear humans, but they also have this strong bias against this, I guess, against this one particular human who shows up and doesn't really have any sign that she's not to be trusted as an individual. Um, and the way that they kind of lash out at Madwin, it's like I understand why you're nervous about this, but also the way you're doing it is like. You know, you know what I mean? So it's interesting. Um, they're not like the, you know, perfect good without bias, like truly superior to humans in all ways. Shriek. Like just something we were in reach of a veritable bonanza. Like why are those the words that Ted Woolsey chose? Veritable bonanza. Why? What? No. Such a strange way of writing. I doubt he called her a fool in the original either. I'm not their friend.
I mean, it's understandable. Like I said, I, I understand why um, they are distrustful and scared. Like, that makes sense. It's, I'm not saying it's without reason. But the fact that they are distrustful of her in particular, despite one of their own falling in love with her and that sort of thing, is... It's not perfect. Tara's a little bean. And then this is just beautiful. The background, I mean. Yeah, like, there's really not of ambiguity there. There's not a lot of room for interpretation of Gestal having compassion or her heart in any way. Okay, so in the original, he takes the child from her. She doesn't give her child to him. I don't think so, Rowan. I think that they reuse the baby sprite later. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense for him to just take the baby instead of for her to give the baby up and then change her mind. During that expedition. Well, then they may just have used the same sprite then. Um, and, and use that as like, a, this is what small things look like. Maybe they programmed it similarly because they both fly around. one of the songs that I've been trying to arrange for my flute choir um, album thing that I've been working on. Which we'll see if I wind up doing because there's some duplicated themes and stuff on it. But pretty sure that should be Let's Go, not Come On. guys but I think I'm gonna have to shut down because I cannot stop yawning and I have a tickle in my throat and I think I'm gonna have to take my laptop which I'm doing work on and go lie down on in bed for a while and uh where's my save point Save point. I know there's one here. Where is it? Right? Or is there a person that I save? Because this guy over here is like, equip your party members? Save point is on the ground. Oh, you can't save. Okay, well, fine. We'll take off.
There we go. There's Zozo. I keep forgetting how much the airship looks like in a mono. Okay, well, I guess no save on the airship, but there's save on the ground. We got it. All right. Well, I'm sorry to be so to have it be such a short stream and such a tired one, but. down with my laptop and get some work done quietly. Yeah, we'll do Kentucky Route Zero tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I might put one of my serious videos up on YouTube. It's got some problems, so I haven't finished editing it because there's visual stuff that I can't do anything about. But I kind of feel like it's in the spirit of the thing to just put up, even if it's flawed, fundamentally flawed. I don't know, we'll see. I'm glad you could make it. It was good to see you. It was good to see everyone who came by. To our new people, thank you for joining us. We do this every Wednesday. I do Twilight Princess on Tuesday evenings, and Kentucky Route Zero is currently what we're playing on Thursdays. So, take care of yourselves, and I will see you all later. Bye!